I'm Richard Ward and I want to introduce a, uh, one of our larger G-series machines to you. Um, we'll do a little tour and walk around uh, down the outside and then back around the inside. What we have here is a concrete wall. Uh, the tank is actually below floor level uh, because we want to be able to put eight foot tall parts underneath the entire machine. So this concrete wall is about three foot thick. Uh, it goes probably another four or five foot into the ground below here. And then we've got our rails sitting across the top. You can see a little cross section of the rail here um, that actually supports the linear rails for the system. Let's go inside and have a look at this from the back. <coughs> so, <coughs> We'll start with the removal system. This uh, machine is equipped for abrasive recycling, so it's ready for recycling. And we have the ability to, of course, remove all the abrasive out of their tank into bags and uh, very easily accessible with this door straight out the wall. Um, as far as the machine itself, uh, like all war jet machines, we have uh, multiple styles of grates. We've got the job shop grates here, we've got the heavy duty grates there. So when we are cutting very big large parts, which I say can be five foot high above the grate, eight foot sunk below the grate, um, there's a choice and uh, uh, options that we have. Uh, something unique about this machine and about something that war jets uh, got a, a patent pending on is a wall that we build that fits inside the slot and I could literally be leaning against the wall having a chat while it's cutting less than 12 inches away and know that I'm safe. What this customer wanted to do was to be able to maybe only be cutting in one part while they're loading and unloading and setting up a job in another. And we didn't want to lose dead space in between that you'd normally have to have for safety with the five axis mechanism. So we're using the patent, uh, patent pending wall and it can drop into any of these slots. Uh, when the wall comes down, we know exactly where it is. The intelligence in our software automatically tells the machine Here's a wall that thinks it's now a smaller water jet system, so it can't run into the wall. You can try to run it in straight as hard as you can, and it, and it won't. And that gives us flexibility that's just unheard of. Uh, looking at the machine itself up here, you can see that we don't spare anything. Um, this is heavy plate. Actually, it's only two plates bent together like that. So we get the best when it comes to any deflections. Everything's heat stress relieved. This entire cross beam is stress relieved. Uh, good walkway. You can of course go through the inside as well. Um, we've got it lined with stainless steel here because in the event of when cutting large parts, we'll get overspray. We've got a camera in here. Uh, full rotation of the camera and all this shows up on the screen and on the controller itself and we've positioned it so that we can look down at what's being cut uh, without ever having to be in the space itself. Each of these Z carriages uh, <clears throat> have 60 inches or 5 foot of travel and uh, we try to make sure that all the working parts are accessible uh, this is a full five axis cutting head system and uh, you can put another five axis on this side here. In this particular case it doesn't have a five axis and this entire machine is designed, this is believe it or not, the light duty cross beam. Uh, you can also put a uh, 30 horsepower, actually up to a 50 horsepower five axis spindle on a second cross beam and run this as a full CNC milling machine. Um, we are running with a helical rack and a split pinion. <clears throat> uh, each of the Z carriages run independent of each other so that you can position them relative and they can position outside of the cutting envelope. 
Something that uh, you might not fully appreciate is we are at actually just below ground level. If you have a look here, here's the ground and we are a little bit down and the purpose for that <clears throat> was so that we could get under the crane height and just make it more accessible and easier to load and walk on being a machine as big as opposed to always climbing up. Another interesting limitation was the position of this plasma unit. We've got a maximum of 10 feet and we still might have to be able to bring parts in and load them and again this is why we have the front wall which is the same patent pending design that you could be leaning against the wall while cutting right here <clears throat> and the machine would be safe. What we've got down the sides are two wide um, alleys. The tank probably stops about here and we've got the access for all our plumbing, uh, all our uh, abrasive removal, everything is fully accessible and if you have a look in the the gap here, you'll see that we are running the high pressure, uh, not the high pressure, but all the abrasive removal system. We've got access to everything inside this area. So uh, we can turn all the valves on and off without having to remove these covers at all through these holes, which are made with a tool you just put in. Uh, any water that comes on will actually just splash off here and run into the tank. And then we've got a nice walkway that makes it so that it's level <clears throat> and you have full access uh, without you know, worrying about falling in. Let's have a look at some of the drive mechanism. We are running, uh, of course, linear rails on the top here. Okay, here's a small chunk of steel that you can see that this whole thing is sitting on. This is a very substantial beam. Uh, everything here is machined in-house at Wardjet. Everything you see is made in-house at Wardjet with the exception of this uh, uh, cross beam um, which was just too big for us. Uh, here you can see the bearings. We've got eight bearings on this machine, four on each side. Um, so there's absolutely no expense spared at all in the system. Let's shoot around the back here. <clears throat> as far as the controller goes, our standard controller that you would see in any other system, standard software, even if you buy a much smaller machine, you're still going to get all this capacity as well as the ability to have all the safety features built into your machine. You can see on the high pressure plumbing, we are running uh, double whips, actually running six quarter inch tubes coming through to two three eighths which are hard plumbed up to the top and then again double whips down so we get maximum cutting power at the head itself. Here you get a closer look again at the uh, uh, helical rack, the split pinion, automatic lubrication. Here's your motor up here, uh, you can see the, the beam coming in and that's what's driving the mechanism. Uh, we then have linear scales for positional accuracy. So these are extremely accurate machines, uh, even though uh, it is a substantial length and with the uh, split pinion we have zero backlash. As far as some of the heart of what's driving the machine. We've, obviously, we've got a chiller, we've got a uh, 150 horsepower pump. There's provision for 250 horsepower pumps on the system. And uh, be careful there. Uh, we've got <coughs> the, uh, this is the water recycling system. So there they will be cutting with the water out of the tank and this will be a 100% closed loop system for this unit. 
The abrasive recycling, uh, when that gets added, will be actually put just outside the building on a lean-to because, as you can see, we run out of space here. Looking back at the machine, you can see the electrical cabinet up top there. We've got a nice platform, so it's very easy to access and service everything electrically. Uh, and uh, that, that's what just makes uh, this whole system so unique. Uh, as far as the pump goes, here's our 916 tubing split, three uh, quarter inch tubes going to each cutting head all going through the whips. Everything is always shielded. So again, uh, an awesome machine. And if you would like one, we would love to make you one. Just give us a shout. Thanks.